With so many combinations, what is the best vehicle build and strategies you can use to survive? Let's find out. Hey guys, Jafar here, and let's get started. There are three types of modular vehicles, including a small chassis with two slots, the medium with three slots, and the large coming in with four slots. The vehicle chassis cannot be extended or crafted, so what you find is what you get. Damaged modular vehicles can be randomly found on the side of the road. They'll come with already attached modules, which can always be swapped out. However, you'll want to look for the chassis that fits your desired goal, because you can't change that later. To start driving a vehicle, you need both the vehicle parts and low-grade fuel. Each modular vehicle comes with an engine. This can either be a dedicated engine block or one with a cockpit module. Open it up and you'll see the parts it requires, with the dedicated engine block requiring more parts. You can easily find low-quality car parts within beginner monuments and buy the road within blue boxes. With the items inside, head to the fuel tank at the back of the vehicle. Include your low-grade fuel. And now you're ready to start driving with W, A, S, and D. You can toggle the headlights with the F key, honk your horn with the left mouse, change seats with X, and get out with space. After owning a vehicle, you'll quickly notice it loses health if you're not perfectly driving it down a paved road. This is to encourage players driving on the road, but sometimes you'll want to take a quicker route. If that's the case, always carry with you a hammer and resources to repair the modules. After you have acquired your vehicle, it's time to start modifying. To find a vehicle lift, which can either be found at the junkyard or ferry terminal, purchased at the bandit camp for 150 scrap, or can be crafted at a level 2 workbench costing 125 scrap for the tech tree. The ones found at the monuments are already powered, meaning you can drive right over them, and the vehicle will attach itself to the lift after hopping out. Otherwise, if you have crafted a lift, you'll need to power it with a battery or power source, consuming 5 power. With the vehicle on the lift, you can access its interior via the lift's menu. Here we can see each module, and add a key, a recommended first upgrade. This adds a code lock to your vehicle, preventing others from stealing it. You can also quickly unlock the vehicle from inside the cockpit. However, when you jump out, the vehicle will be automatically locked again. Lifts also allow you to repair the vehicle directly from the menu, which is cheaper than using a hammer and materials. The 13 modules is what makes vehicles in this game unique. Using the vehicle lift, you can replace or rearrange modules between slots. Modules can be researched and crafted at a level 2 or 3 workbench. This single slot item can accommodate up to 2 people, featuring an engine module at the front. It features a bulletproof front glass window that breaks when the health drops below 337 HP or shot with an AK 18 times, but can be restored upon repair. This is also a single slot item that can seat up to two people and does not feature an engine. It's equipped with a front glass window that breaks when the module's health is less than 285 HP or shot 16 times with an AK. This single slot item can fit two people and like the cockpit module lacks an engine. With 700 HP it's approximately twice the durability as other cabins. The module is interactive, allowing occupants to turn their heads while seated to open or close the side slots. However, if they're down, occupants are vulnerable to being shot out. It also features bulletproof glass at the front that breaks when the module's health reaches 420 HP or shot with an AK 56 times. This module is a single slot item, which offers more power compared to the smaller cockpit engine, but that comes at the cost of requiring more parts. Engines can be chained together to boost the vehicle's speed. If you're interested in using multiple engines, Spread them out, so it's more unlikely for you to be stranded when an engine's disabled. This double slot item can hold up to 6 other players. The module doesn't feature any glass windows, making all passengers inside sitting ducks. A 1 slot item module that holds a max of 2 players. Once again, no glass is featured, making you extremely vulnerable. This is a 1 slot item module, holding a max of 2 people. Like the armoured cockpit, you have interactable side windows, but now also interactable front windows. The back panel breaks off when the module is below 170 health, or after 112 AK shots. A flatbed module features a single slot and double slot variant. Their only purpose is for other players to be able to stand on it while the vehicle is driving, giving you a full 360 degrees of coverage. The tank module is a double slot item, allowing you to haul 200 litres of water. 
It has a fluid in and out connection on the side. The fluid out connection can output 500 fluid, meaning you can power 250 sprinklers in one output. This module is best used when connected to the farm to act as the primary sprinkler water source. This single slot item can hold up to 48 items, making it great for quickly transferring items between bases, raids, or outer monuments, especially with multiple of them chained together on a four slot chassis. If you're using an open cockpit, you can access the storage if it's directly behind you. Most importantly, if the vehicle is locked, other players can't open your storage. If you want to be an Uber and Rust, you can use this single slot module to safely ferry around two passengers. Other players can hop into the module surrounded by bulletproof glass. A shared trading container can be found between the driver and passenger holding 12 items, allowing for safe transactions. The driver also has the option to kick out the passengers. At 204 HP or 19 AK shots, the bulletproof windows break. The camper module is a double slot item, offering an array of features such as the ability for players to respawn inside of it. It essentially acts as a moving sleeping bag, supporting up to four other players to also spawn inside. The respawn timer is five minutes, which is the same as a sleeping bag. The camper module also features 18 inventory slots, along with an inbuilt barbecue to cook your meats. I would suggest taking metal frags, high quality metal and wood to repair if it's damaged. Otherwise, when it loses durability, the whole side panel pops off, leaving the whole inside and potentially the driver exposed. Funny enough, you can chain together multiple cockpits to allow multiple people to steer at once. I'm not sure when you would want to do this, but at least it's possible. The vehicle's performance depends on the quality of parts you put inside the engine. There are three types of vehicle parts, low, medium, and high quality. High quality valves and carburetors enhance fuel economy while pistons, crankshafts, and carburetors boost top speed. Spark plugs and pistons also increase the vehicle's acceleration. The health of the engine also impacts the vehicle's speed. Here we can see how the engine's performance is impacted by the health. Here's a speed comparison for a fully healed two-slot vehicle equipped with low, medium, high quality, and high quality plus armored parts. The low quality parts can be found in vehicle crates along the road and within smaller monuments. They can also be crafted after directly researching them and crafting it from a level 1 workbench. The medium quality parts can be purchased at the vehicle parts shop at the bandit camp for 40 to 65 scrap. Otherwise, you can craft them at a level 2 workbench, costing 220 scrap for the tech tree. The high quality parts can be crafted at a level 3 workbench, costing 145 scrap for the tech tree. Every player is going to want to use the vehicle in a different way. However, I've compiled a few builds that I believe are the best suited for various scenarios. For the tank build, I recommend the three slot chassis, with the engine module at the front, an armored cockpit in the middle, with a second engine on the back for added speed and redundancy, in case one engine is destroyed. The armored cockpit and engine are essential modules, but you could replace the second engine with an armored passenger module. If you do, move the engine to the middle for better protection. For the absolute fastest vehicle, you'll need a four slot chassis to fill each slot with a dedicated engine and engine cockpit. Its larger size makes it more stable off-road. However, all the engines will consume a lot of fuel. I found that this build will consume around nine fuel for a loop around the airfield. For transporting liquids to your base, you want the four slot chassis with an armored cockpit, engine, and tank module. The four slot chassis allows you to later remove the cockpit and attach a second tank if you no longer plan on driving it. My pick for transporting loot is a four module chassis including an engine, armored cockpit, storage container, and a final engine on the back. When transporting a lot of loot, I prioritize speed, protection, and reliability. My pick for the best raid vehicle includes the four slot chassis, including an armored cockpit, engine, and camper van module, seating a max of six people. The camper van module allows you and your teammates to continuously spawn up outside the enemy's base. It also gives you the freedom to adjust your spawns based on how the situation evolves. I would suggest you have a teammate that uses the transport build in tandem with this vehicle, as one teammate can stock up on loot and drive it home, while the other bunkers down and continues the raid. And for the overall winner, I've picked the raid build, due to its combination of storage, spawn points, seating and protection meaning it can be practically used anywhere. You can drive vehicles within safe zones, but be extremely careful. 
as damaging any player will result in you being the turret's primary target. Avoid driving to the front gates and leave your vehicle on the outskirts locked. Therefore, players won't be able to damage it, get in, or troll by standing around it. When driving at full speed, you can jump out the vehicle without taking damage. Use this to your advantage when driving by a player, if you can't hit them with a car. For them, they'll continue to watch the vehicle as it drives by, but if you hop out right as you're passing them, you could catch them off guard and get an easy kill. Even if you don't have a storage module, dropped items stay inside the vehicle. This means if you need to quickly dump loot, you can hop inside, drop your items on the ground, and they'll stay within the vehicle. Now you can drive off and back home full of loot. Space out passenger modules from your armoured cockpit. Typically, the armoured cockpit has a back wall protecting the driver. However, once you attach a passenger module like the camper van directly to the back of the armoured cockpit, it now opens. This means once the camper van is damaged, enemies will have a massive hole to shoot you through. And that's it. If you made it this far, I would appreciate the like. Thanks for watching and I hope to see you in the next one.